I, I farm up in Saskatchewan, and uh, my question is around autonomy. Like, you know, with the sensing technology we just saw and autonomy that's coming through the pipeline, and, you know, all our equipment has gotten so big over the last, well, since we started mechanization, right? Everything's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and heavier and more complex. With that autonomy, is John Deere working on small equipment? Because if you're fully autonomous, why not have, I don't know, 10, 10 foot drills instead of one 100 foot drill? It's, it's a robot, who cares, right? It'd be cheaper, lighter, easier to repair. Heck, if it gets down to a micro level, it could be disposable machines. You know, you don't even fix them, you just toss them away, and recycle them, whatever. So I know that's further down the line, but is, is that something John Deere's talking about or looking at or publicly talking about? Okay. Um, have you ever heard of Tango? John Deere Tango? Okay. Only a product uh, available in Europe, but it's basically a Roomba for your lawn. <laughs> All right. So Deere, Deere has, um, has and will continue to investigate uh, the autonomy. Where we're at right now, uh, and you may have seen um, Case come out last year with their, uh, with their autonomous tractor. Um, and then for those of you that were at the uh, Ag in Motion dot, that, that spur, um, as of right now, uh, where I think Deere is at with that is we're kind of waiting to see what Elon Musk does with his, uh, his uh, self-driving trucks. The biggest, the biggest hurdle, because you, you saw in the videos, is that the tractors are basically autonomous right now. We're just putting someone in the seat. And it all comes down to the liability behind that. Um, the liability behind, you know, uh, children running around, dogs running around, driving through a slough, all right? Uh, one, one mishap, and we're gonna be in the, in the courts for years. So, is Deer, uh, Looking at autonomy, yes, absolutely. Um, at where we're at uh, in, in like our in our testing facilities in Waterloo, I think that uh, we've been doing that for for a number of years. But publicly, are we ready to come out? No, I don't think I don't think quite yet. Not sure how many programs we actually own on our farm uh, to run all our John Deere equipment. But when it comes to the blue ribbon, will we be buying different weeds? buying the technology to spray a certain weed, or will it be a, how would we program that? So we don't actually know yet. Um, the way the system's set up is that the machine itself learns. So it learns what a pigweed is, what another weed is, and from my understanding is that when it comes to the cost and subscription base, that's way down the line. Um, but the way they start the video though, is that the tractor's learning, the machine's learning all the time, it would eventually learn what's going on in your field as well, right? So, <coughs> unfortunately, I don't have a direct answer for that. And just to follow up with Jeff's question, it, it was more along the lines of not the automation, but the size that's related to it. So you got a 600 horsepower tractor that five years from now might be obsolete. Yeah. Right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you don't need, if you can have that tractor running 24 hours a day, then why do you need a 76 foot foot drill? You could have have a smaller, and then we wouldn't be known as an expensive uh, manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think there's a convention that you can go to these days without hearing about data, uh, big data and data collection. What's John Deere's position on who owns that data? So um, when you go on, when I talked about the operations center, when you go on there, you, uh, when you sign up, you click on the box and it says that, that this is your data. Um, Deer takes, takes the privacy very, very seriously. Um, when, you, when you work with your dealers too, they, uh, when you go into a, a contract with them um, on buying a tractor, you will also be signing a, a data agreement too. Um, that, that the data belongs to you. Um, the neat thing about the operation center is that you can decide who you want to see that data. So if you have the home farm field and you want your agronomist to only see that home farm and you only want him to see the application data, then you can, you can choose that. Or if you want the dealer to only see um, your, your machine data, so for your combines, tractors, spares, you don't want them to see the, the, um, the uh, 
agronomic data, you can do that too. So um, if you go on to the, to the DEER website, um, there's a whole, a whole big article about the, the data and that how it, it belongs to the, to the customer. I'll ask another one. Uh, John Deere is probably one one of the most recognized brands globally, which is kind of an anomaly because there's not a lot of agricultural brands that are known outside of our industry. Uh, so it's probably been a focus of John Deere to create that yeah, that public brand. So I think there's probably um, some ownership that John Deere should take in the discussions that we're having in the defense of modern agriculture. We're trying to talk to consumers about the industry and what we're doing and defending all of that. Does John Deere participating, are you using your brand uh, familiarity to talk to consumers about modern agriculture and, and try to help us defend some of the newest innovation that's coming? Probably not as good as we, as we should, <laughs> definitely. Um, there's probably definitely an opportunity there to, to leverage, leverage the brand for sure. Um, when it comes to deer, I don't know how many of you saw last year. Uh, it was, I think it happened in Germany. There was a Twitter picture that went out of this uh, shirt that um, was made out of organic cotton. And, and then deer, deer I think, did, they, did we retweet it or something? I, I forget what the context is, but it just goes to show that this happened in Germany and blew up around the world because then everybody thought that John Deere only supported organic cotton farmers, which is not true. Um, we, there, 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 there's, there's lots of uh, GMO cotton in, in the South that, uh, that, that we sell lots of cotton pickers to. Um, but it just goes to show that how fast these things can explode and for a, for a worldwide company, um, that, that deer needs to make sure that we're appeasing, you know, the organic farmers and the conventional, the non-GMO, the GMO, 